Hi golfers, Rob Cheney here from Golf Tech Singapore. Today's video we're going to discuss the elbows, the arms, their role in the swing and how we can use a very simple concept to help you improve your ball striking and your distance. So the subject of today's video is squeeze the elbows. What does that mean? Well, one thing I think you might be interested to learn is that as you swing back and through, good golfers tend to keep their distance that their elbows are apart quite similar, um, meaning that the space between the arms here and the elbows is the same, more or less the same as it is at the top of the swing, pretty similar at impact and well into the follow through. And yet with golfers who struggle with their ball striking, their consistency of contact and controlling their shot direction, the arms and the elbows can actually be the root cause of a lot of the problems. Unruly, chaotic arms cause massive issues in terms of controlling the club's radius or the swing's radius, meaning that they have difficulty making consistent contact. So today I'm gonna to discuss some feels and some ideas behind helping you not only improve your ball striking through better radius management or keeping these arms straight, but also to help you hit the ball straighter because as you learn to control the arms and the elbows correctly, the swing direction, the path and the travel of the club around you can also improve. So one of the biggest errors I see constantly when it comes to elbows and arm structure is the arms getting further apart, the elbows getting further apart during the backswing. Oftentimes that's through uh, poor concepts, but it can also be down to poor body motion and pivot in the backswing. And what a lot of golfers are doing is they're using their arms and the wrists to elevate the club and lift it up into the air, causing these issues with regards to the, the elbows spacing. As I've already said, as the arms flex and pull apart, you start to mess up the swing's radius, the width of the swing arc, if you like. And that has fairly obvious, I would hope, consequences, I hope it's easy for you to understand, that would have some fairly obvious consequences on controlling contact and getting the low point of your swing in the, in the same place every time. So at the top here, if you notice that your elbows have pulled apart, particularly if your right arm has flexed beyond sort of 90 degrees and it's gone into this condition, you're gonna to start to benefit from some of the stuff that I'm gonna describe now. There are a few good training aids out there that can help you to get the sensation I'm about to describe. This one actually came uh, with the hanger drill, uh, the hanger training aid that I reviewed last week. If you haven't seen that video on the wrists and how to control the wrists, do go and check it out. I'll also link that video in the description below. But the hanger training aid, which is primarily about helping you to control the wrists, also have this product here called the structure ball. Uh, the structure ball is like a, a rugby shaped ball, maybe more like an American football for some of you viewing this, um, with, with the sides cut out so that we can fit our forearms together like so. I've used similar products in the previously. I really like the Tor Striker Smart Ball. That's quite similar to this product. But this one actually has a space on both sides here cut out for your forearms to sit. It's slightly tapered, so there's a, there's a top side and a bottom side. And once we get our forearms in there and we take hold of the, of the golf club, what this is gonna help to illustrate by holding the ball between my forearms, I'm having to keep my elbows pr pretty much the same distance apart throughout the swing. And what that's gonna stop me from doing, it's gonna stop me from pulling my arms apart and getting too long in this backswing. It's gonna really help me to keep some structure to my arms, particularly as I come back down into impact. It's gonna be a great feeling for me to squeeze the elbows. That was really the, the topic of today's video. The idea that through the time and space of the swing, there's an actual feeling of keeping the pressure. I'm pushing, I'm pushing inwards to keep this ball in place. And I think often, because golfers are trying to swing very, trying to stay relaxed, trying to keep some rhythm and some flow to their swing, which I certainly believe is important, sometimes that can end up being so light and so loose that their arms just get soft and flex. If I did that, you'll see that I would drop the ball. So learning to have some structure to your swing at some level 
has to be a priority. You can't just get away with swinging freely and smoothly in a way that feels comfortable. Sometimes good golf swings, and I'm certainly, I would certainly preach this in terms of my experience on the lesson tee and watching golfers develop over a number of years, I'm a believer that there needs to be a little bit more structure in the arms and a little bit more tension uh, to, the, to the point of feeling like we're squeezing the arms together. I'm, I'm more on that side of the fence and, and that side of the spectrum than I am loose and light and everything should be uh, relaxed. So don't get me wrong, I think, there's a, I think there's a balance point in there which I'm not sure is the same for every single golfer, but just as a general rule, uh, it's particularly if you're struggling to make consistent contact in your swing and you're looking for something that's going to unlock that consistency that you're, that you're lacking, going from something that's very long, um, you know, quite unruly and producing quite volatile and, and fleeting uh, contact and direction, going down the road of being more structured, a little bit more controlled, a little bit more um, tension potentially here and squeezing my arms throughout the swing, it's going to lead to something that's more predictable, more consistent. That's something that you certainly should be considering. The other great benefit to keeping your arms and elbows squeezed and together is in the downswing. So keeping the elbows close and I'm pushing my forearms together as I pull the club down here it has a really benef a big benefit on the path and the travel of this club back down. Okay, I'm, I'm able to control the path of the swing much more accurately. I also benefit hugely from how keeping the elbows together influences my wrist bend. So you'll notice here I'm still able to maintain some nice wrist cock, some lag if you like. I've got the hands back down almost over the top of the ball. By squeezing my arms and keeping this right arm into my side, I'm really able to do that. One of the big mistakes that golfers who struggle with this ex experience, as the elbows get too far apart on the downswing, you're going to notice a couple of things. I'm about to drop this ball as I pull my elbows further apart. The ball hits the ground. Notice where my club head has gone now from this down the line camera view. The further apart my elbows get, the more my club head starts to move outside. So I'm starting now to swing down more and across the ball more with this look. Equally from face on, as my elbow goes from being close together and my right elbow is in front of my rib cage to being further apart, you're going to notice the difference that that leads to in the delivery of the club. The scooping, the flipping, brings in hitting the, that, this brings in hitting the ground behind the ball, starts to add more dynamic loft to the club, so you're increasing the loft that you hit the ball with and therefore you're losing distance. So the elbows have a huge role to play in this downswing. They get too far apart, you can see how that steepens the shaft and starts to throw things off. It's a piece of the puzzle that isn't always fully appreciated. I've spoken about the role of this right arm as well in previous videos. As I'm squeezing coming down here, I feel like I lose an arm wrestle. Okay, so if I've got my trail arm here, which obviously for me is my right hand, as I'm swinging down towards the ball, my elbows moving in front, my forearm and my hand feels like I'm getting beaten in an arm wrestle. Okay, that's going to start to help me create the right feeling of this external rotation in my shoulder coming down. If I was to win the arm wrestle, start to allow the elbow to get higher and the elbows to pull apart, you'll see this steepening effect, steepening effect and also this swinging across and scooping. So once again, enormous benefit to learning to keep the arms straight or the elbows close and squeezed together. And then if we wrap up with a full house of benefits here as far as the swing's concerned, how many of you struggle with this chicken wing and your arms flexing coming through the ball like this? That's a sign that you've poor arm structure but can also be down to poor body pivot. And what I mean by that is if the body starts to stall or stop and slow down as it comes into the ball too much, the, the, the speed of the club, the hands and the arms is going to overtake and that's often what you're seeing when you see these arms flex and the chicken wing appear. The benefit of this ball continues and, and the idea of squeezing our arms together throughout the swing doesn't just stop at impact as we keep going, 
by squeezing the ball, it forces my body into a better pivot. And that can only be a good thing. One of the great things I look for, I've mentioned before, in any fields or training aids that I use, is that you get a lot of stuff for free. You don't have to think about too many things. I've listed already a number of benefits you're gonna get from backswing, downswing, impact, and now we're into the follow through, just by feeling like your arms and your elbows stay close together. And you can use training aids, as I said already, there's a couple of options out there. This one's pretty good, I like it. The Tour Striker Smart Ball I've already mentioned is equally good, and I'm sure there's one or two others that I haven't mentioned. Using a training aid is, is good if it helps you. It's not absolutely necessary, but I would say that if you struggle with this, having something to physically squeeze between your arms is gonna be much easier for you to do than just having nothing between your arms and sort of trying to squeeze your arms. I think in the first instance, having something here can really help. That can even just be a, a soft, maybe a soft toy or an object, a cushion or a head cover that you might have that you could manufacture and figure out a way to squeeze between your arms. Have something in there that you're physically holding throughout the swing. So I've listed the benefits. What I would tr get you to do is just make swings. Most important thing here is that I get the feedback of, of hitting the ground and making fairly small swings to start with. You can build up to something bigger, but again, in the beginning, you're gonna notice, especially if you're someone who does swing too far back, keeping your elbows together is gonna make it feel like you've got quite a short, short swing. That's okay, don't be afraid of that feeling, all right? Just build your practice around uh, improving the form so focus your practice time on improving the structure and the form and understand that when the ball disappears and you go and make a full swing and, and you start to play again, things are probably, probably going to get a little bit loose and a little bit unruly again. But that's the point of coming back, using the feedback, using the tool, and when you practice again, get back into developing the structure. Okay? So small swings, building up the speed, squeezing the arms together. All throughout this, I'm squeezing and pushing my elbows in together towards each other. It's interesting, actually, even for me, I notice one of my sort of pieces of my swing that I know I need to do a little bit better at is on the pivot coming through, I quite often will get a little sloppy, a little slow with my body, I'll stall, I'll stay a little bit bent over and I'll get a lot of this throw and, and roll of the club through the ball. And what's what makes me prone to overdrawing the balls and hitting them to the left. What I notice just by hitting a couple of balls with this structure ball in between my arms is I immediately feel like I have to be more turned and extended at this point in my swing. So it's a great exercise for someone like myself who you know, I can play pretty decent, I don't practice a lot, but when I put these, this ball between my arms, I can feel like it's really having a, a benefit to my swing. So I'm pretty sure it's gonna help you guys out there who are gonna experiment with this too. That was really nice. I actually feel, even just in a few swings here, like I really have to start moving with a little bit more, in a slightly different way, and it feels a lot more powerful actually. I feel like I'm, pushing through the ground a little bit differently. The rotation of my body definitely feels different. Um, and I'm getting all of that really for free. I'm just having to conform to the idea of keeping my arms straight, my elbows together. So tons and tons of benefits to this concept. Start out small, um, you know, pitching and chipping and shorter shots, you can really learn to develop this skill, maybe at a speed that's more comfortable. And then um, you know, develop that into fuller shots with the irons maybe first of all, and then work your way up to the longer clubs. You can definitely do this with the driver eventually. Just understand that because of the additional speed that you're generating with the driver and the fact the club's longer and, and wants to swing further around you, it does become a little bit more tricky, but there's no reason not to stick to the plan. Uh, if you look at great golfers, historically, the vast majority of them are really doing a nice job of keeping these elbows together. And even if you're a golfer maybe lifts their arms a bit more in the backswing, even has their arms pulled apart slightly, getting them back down in front of you and getting them close together on the downswing really is a, a hallmark of a good ball striker. So it's well worth getting a sensation of what this feels like to help you 
develop your ball striking. Guys, thanks for watching the video today. I hope you found it useful. This is the structure ball from Watson Golf. There are our other options as I've already touched on. I'll put a link down to this in the description below if you're interested in checking it out. Once again, I'm not being paid by Watson Golf for any of this. I just found the product useful. I'll also put a link to the Tour Striker Smart Ball, which is a product I've used a lot over the years and, and works in a very similar way I, and would highly recommend that one too. Um, I'll also chuck in a few video descriptions down below where we've talked arm straight before. This is really this concept, I suppose, it very much falls under the two words of the stack, stack and tilt, 10 words, arms straight. The concept that the radius management of the swing, controlling the contact is easier, uh, more consistent, and, and easier for you to repeat if you're managing the way these elbows and arms work throughout the swing. So I'll throw a few videos down in the description as well that, that may well benefit you if you enjoy this topic and you're looking for some other ideas and feels on how to improve this part of your swing. If you did enjoy today's video, please do, do go ahead and hit that like button. If you're not already subscribed, I'd appreciate that. Join the community. Uh, we're nearly at 20,000 subscribers, which is a lot of fun and uh, looking forward to growing this more as we go through the year. Until next time, guys, do take care, stay safe, and I'll see you again very soon for another video.